So if you're looking to get into the controls and automation industry, whether that's smart home automation, commercial BMS or industrial controls, mastering how electrical control panels are built and wired is one of the cornerstones of becoming a control and automation specialist. And I think of this stage as the second skill set to be learned when you're on your journey into the industry, right after you've conquered the world of schematic. Just imagine moving from a complex web of wires to a clear logical map in your mind where every relay, contactor and terminal block clicks into place, excuse the pun. And this isn't just about learning to wire up a system, it's about peeling back those layers of complexity to reveal the surprisingly straightforward method it takes to construct a control system. And with this skill set, paired with a solid foundation in electrical schematics, you'll be able to walk onto any site, not just as any other engineer, but as a confident problem solver, ready to tackle things like faults, modifications and upgrades hands-on. So why master electrical panel building and wiring? Because this is where a real transformation starts to begin, from an anxious beginner to a capable professional. And as mentioned, control panel building and wiring is the second step I recommend individuals and businesses take when starting on the path to becoming a well-rounded, capable and confident engineer who are able to deliver control and automation projects across any sector within the industry. So whether that be smart home automation, commercial BMS or industrial controls and instrumentation. And it's exactly the same skill set that transfers across all these different sectors. And if you wanted a free training in how to build electrical control panels, then make sure you click the link in the description. Make sure it's after this video though, and not before, and we'll send you free training and resources on that. Now, on to the question, why master electrical panel building? So the first key thing is that the building and the wiring of control systems is really part of the foundations along with step one, mastering schematics. And this is really for all other skills to build upon. Because if you think about it, you can't really progress onto design and PLC programming if you don't really understand the what and the how of how these systems are put together. And also, and I can say this from first-hand experience, having this level of understanding early on will remove huge amounts of on-site anxiety and overwhelm when working with existing systems on site. Just understanding how a system is built and how it's wired from scratch helps you understand that actually these things aren't as complicated as they seem. But you really need to see the build process from start to finish to truly grasp that things aren't as complicated as they seem when you're faced with a faulty control system on site. The second key thing is it really helps build an understanding of what core hardware is used within a system. And again, this is kind of paired with the electrical schematics, but this helps you start to really see, visually see, what physical parts and hardware are being used. So things like relays, contactors, PLCs, etc. And this also allows you to see how the physical wiring looks compared to the wiring that you see on the schematics in the diagrams because the physical wiring doesn't always exactly reflect what you see on the diagrams because the reality is when you come to do the physical wiring although technically it's the same and the same types of circuits as you see in the diagrams physically the physical wiring doesn't perfectly match the lines on the diagrams. So this can throw people off initially when they see this before they understand this concept. And also it shows you how they're actually wired, how the components are wired from terminal block to other components, their relationship with PLCs, contactors, and it really starts to build up a picture in your mind of how these systems are working. And the third key thing, and I think this is probably the most important, is it prepares you for sight, it gets you sight ready. And what I mean by that is confidence, really. And this is half the battle. Just having confidence to think straight when you're faced with an issue on sight. You can go through things logically with less fear and less emotion. And as you can imagine, this makes you a far more efficient engineer when doing lower level commissioning, fault finding and installation. 
in getting systems through initial teething problems that always happens, or if you're coming back as a service or maintenance engineer. And as a result from this, you end up with happier customers and clients, and if you're employed, happier bosses. I just want to go through a personal story from when I was getting into the industry and I was having to learn how to build and wire control panels. And this was when I was working as an electrical controls engineer for r and Industrial who focused on industrial HVAC. And because it was a very small company and I was pretty, well, I was the only person in the electrical department and I didn't really have any help from anyone else. There was no other experienced engineers. The boss was busy with other things and I really just wanted to take on the responsibility myself. But that meant that I had to take on the responsibility of learning how to do these things. And at the time, probably still the case, the information online was pretty much non-existent. So what I did, I was lucky enough to actually be able to go onto different sites with the job that I was with, and I was able to actually see on-site control panels, particularly BMS panels. So what I would do, rightly or wrongly, Providing I could actually open up the control panel without switching off the system, and I learned a little hack to enable me to do this. But what I would do is I would open up the control panel, I would take loads of photos, close-ups and far away, and of the outside external panel. And nine times out of 10, they'd also have the schematics there in the panel. So I'd take as many photos of them as I could as well. And then when I got home, I would study them. So this would really help me build up an understanding of the system when I was off site, away from site pressures, where I'd reference the photos that I took to the photos of the diagrams that I took and slowly but surely piece together how the system was put together. But also from these photos, I was able to see how control panels were laid out and what components were used. And ultimately moving forward, when I was responsible and tasked with building and wiring and designing and all the rest of it, of these control panels, I'd pretty much copy them. And what I realized after I did this countless times is that all systems, no matter what industry they're in, are all built and wired and designed in the same way. All control and automation systems are built from the fundamental principles of electrical controls. So in my personal opinion, for people who are new or with less experience, learning how to master control panel building and wiring is one of the fundamental skills that should be learned early on. And this skill coupled with understanding electrical schematics will give you an unshakable foundation for every other skill to build upon. And this is gonna put you in a much better place when you come to do site work making you far more efficient, resulting in happier clients and happier bosses. But most importantly, for you, this is gonna give you a huge amount of confidence early on in your career. It's gonna remove huge amounts of site anxiety, and trust me, I know what that feels like, and ultimately get you on the path to becoming a very well-rounded control and automation specialist. And remember, if you want access to our free training in how to build electrical control panels, then you can now click that link in the description and we'll send you the free training and resources.